Are the kids different from us? <laughs> well, in recent years, we've begun to label generations with names. Uh, the starting point on all that was to refer to those born just after the Second World War as baby boomers. Now we've got a whole framework of names. Okay, here's one such summary just, <laughs> just to guide you. Silent generation, ages 74 to 91. Baby boomers, 55 to 73. Generation X, 39 to 54. Millennials, 23 to 38. Gen Z, 7 to 22. And A, 0 to 6. Look, you might wonder why we have to do all this, but it's because for many, the Internet's changed the way in which people interrelate so radically that we must take note of its effects by age group. Others say this is all nonsense, uh, people are people, etc., etc. But for the first group, it's the most profound psychological and sociological change in many years. So, as usual, I look at both sides. First of all, those who say, yes, uh, the kids are different. Well, one could find many examples of differences among these various groups. For example, the Generation Zers, Zers for the Americans, tend to be more highly interested in, in saving money than millennials uh, were at that age. That may, maybe it's because they cleverly see <laughs> more storm clouds on the economic horizon and on their own financial futures. They're, they're just going to have to be more careful. That's quite a major change from the long-running assumption of everybody will just get richer and richer. <laughs> Uh, millennials, they're the first generation to be digital natives, I guess you could call them. This makes them uh, more self-sufficient. They no longer have to rely on others to solve their problems or teach them things. They have the internet for that. They're curious. They're inclined to question authority. Uh, more likely to show up for an appointment with their doctor, for example, with a li list of possible diagnostic explanations for their various aches and pains together with proposed remedies rather than simply relying on his expert advice. Uh, in the workplace these differences uh, become pretty obvious and sometimes galling for some. <laughs> uh, it can be frustrating for older generations if they're used to asking someone a question in person uh, when younger generations prefer to just send a message and as for Generation Alpha, if you've ever used the phrase iPad babies to describe children who are given tablets <laughs> instead of pacifiers, you're talking about Generation Alpha. That's how they entered the nickname also, uh, deserve the nickname the Generation Glass. Uh, younger groups use labels differently from the older generations. Not only do they classify people, for example, as male and female, but as gay, bisexual, trans transsexual, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. One sociologist has concluded that there are now 100 different possible gender classifications. So, well, for many older people, this is utterly baffling and, and incomprehensible. For many, it is even a source of anxiety and even hostility. Uh, we don't need any of this nonsense. <laughs> uh, the key difference between all of these cohorts and groups are, are the different methods of communication they use, where, where the silent generation uh, and the baby boomers had to rely on face-to-face -face relationships, and as a result are perhaps more engaged in their real-life communities. The younger generations have social media for that and create their communities online instead. Uh, they may not be the next door neighbor, they might be somebody on the other side of the world. There are thus huge differences between these various groups and, and it's folly to ignore them. Well, what about those who say, no, no, they're not different, come on. <laughs> uh, first of all, they would say, uh, to begin with, uh, we are still human beings with all the hopes, anxieties, neuroses, uh, pathologies, instincts, and all of that we, that we've had since the beginning of recorded history. Nothing changes that. Uh, another way of looking at this is to say that the real divider among human beings deep down is the question of values, of distinguishing between right and wrong, of behaving in harmony with the rest of the world. 
This has nothing to do with age classifications and cohorts and all that sort of thing. And many would say, look, I don't have any difficulty communicating with my children and my grandchildren. I don't even see any major differences in their respective outlooks on life. Well, that certainly is a, a strong statement to the contrary and one that, that rejects all of those uh, differences or at least uh, belittles uh, the significance of the differences. Well, in all of this, what's my take? My take is the kids are absolutely different. The internet has changed everything. Uh, the way we communicate, the way we entertain ourselves, even the way we think. Uh, the more intensively immersed in the digital world, the more different from those that aren't. And one more thing I have to say, some people, and I know some of them, proudly state that they not only avoid the internet, but even have decided not to own a computer. In my view, such people are foolishly and even destructively cutting themselves off from the rest of the world and from civilization as it advances. It's time for them to wake up. In other words, the generations are different, uh, but we are all well advised to embr embrace the differences and develop our own behavior accordingly. <laughs> well, I hope you like that. I'm sure some of you, especially the older ones, won't. <laughs> but if you did, please, the usual thing, give me a like, subscribe, uh, comment, uh, notify, and all of that. And I'll see you at the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. <laughs>